Hello everyone, my name is Barbara and I would like to welcome you all to our latest Novage webinar episode. This week, CFD and FEM simulations on the cloud. This webinar will provide an overview of Concept Cloud Simulation Subscription and how to use it to perform state-of-the-art simulations in the fluid dynamics and stress analysis sectors. Through real case applications, the whole simulation process will be covered and explained. Stick around for a great uh, demo. Today's presenter, Alessandro Palmas, is one of Consalf co-founders. He has a M an MNC in Aerospace Engineering from Turing and Milan Polytechnics and Glasgow University. Prior to founding Consalf, Alessandro worked at FCA as a specialist engineer and at Carolit as a CFD software developer. Before we get going, Here's an overview of what we do in Novage. Novage is one of the largest online store for design software. We offer a huge assortment of software solutions that cater to virtually every designer's need. Uh, put us to the test and you'll see how, you know, how many brands we carry and the huge list of products. Visit us at novage.com. For more daily software news and limited time promotions, also you can follow um, Novage on Facebook, Google Plus and Twitter. Coming up next week, Game Changing Visualization with Twinmotion. Twinmotion is a real-time visualization and immersion software that is changing the way designers and engineers interact with their models. Last but not least, today's webinar is free and is being recorded live. If you want to rewatch this or any webinar episodes in our collection, just head on over to Novage's YouTube or Vimeo channels. And now, if Alessandro is ready, I will um, make him the presenter so he can start his intro yep. and presentation. Okay, so again, uh, good morning everyone and thank you Barbara for this great opportunity to present concepts to everyone. So let's start with our mission and it says provide design technology easy to use and accessible everywhere. Uh, I wanted to start with this sentence because it, it represents our main goal. We really want to make the best design technologies available to everyone, overcoming problems like know-how and mainly financial, financial resources. And how we are going to do that? Well, our solution is called Cloud Simulation Platform. It is a state-of-the-art engineering simulation software on the cloud, accessible through a common web browser from any internet-connected device and based on the paper use approach. It's uh, a really innovative tool and I'm going to show you how the process to complete a simulation on your web browser. It deals with five steps. The first one is uh, the login. With uh, your credential through our website you can access our uh, web application uh, at the address app.concept.com. It provides you a safe environment with SSL encryption. It's 100% private and obviously once you sign up our uh, subscriptions, you have an NDA enclosed that protects all your, your uh, data like CAD models or analysis. The second step is called geometry step. Basically, from now on, you are completing a state-of-the-art simulation that starts right after your CAD model is ready. And so the first thing you have to do is to upload your geometry on our servers. You have to, to choose between STEP, IGES, or STL files that are common in this field. We upset uh, you, uh, file units ranging from the international system to, to other kind of, of uh, unit of measures like foot, inch or miles. And as you will see in our demo, there is a, a very simple and flexible interaction and manipulation process in this geometry step. It, it is needed to uh, identify your zones where 
let's, let's say for example where your flow enters your domain or where your physical boundaries are placed. Then there is the meshing step where you basically you create a computational grid that it's uh, not so straightforward terms to basically define the procedure by means you divide your domain into small pieces called cells. We provide two different meshing algorithms. The first one is the tetrahedral with boundary layer for best accuracy and the other one is, is the hexahedral with cat cells that offers you top robustness. It's a guided, highly customizable procedure. It, it's organized in, in a double phase with the surface meshing first and then a volume one. Right after the meshing, you are, are going to deal with the simulation, the simulation step. Here is where you assign the so-called boundary condition. Boundary condition that describes the physical behavior of your fluid, for example, air, water, oil, in your domain. Let's say you need to specify where the flow enters, where it exits, at what pressure, at which velocity, and so on. We are going to see this applied in a real test case. Here, the most important thing I want to stress is that we offer a state-of-the-art solution, and you are going to see why in few slides. And a very important feature we provide is the fact that we have dedicated application for different industrial sectors. This is a key advantage for you because if you are familiar with, let's say, valve design, maybe you are not so familiar with rotating flows encountered, for example, in pumps, in centrifugal pumps. So, we, we, we provide you with a, a very simple environment dedicated to the valve sector. There, you have only those parameters that are really familiar to you and set up a simulation is really straightforward. And finally, we provide also on-demand development. And this is in case you find a niche where we can build a dedicated application. We have specific um, people that are able to implement this kind of features very quickly. And in case you have specific needs, you just have to ask. Finally, the post-processing. Once your simulation is completed, you can choose between a standard post-processing online with slices, streamline, contour, for example, showing how the pressure is distributed uh, around your object or velocities inside your pipes. Or otherwise, you can download the solution file and post-process it locally with, let's say, for example, Paraview, that is a very, very well-known uh, open source software. So, the most important thing is that all this tool can be used through a common web browser. It's everything is on the cloud and you have just to log in, upload your model and then you're good to go. Why I was saying we offer a state-of-the-art solution? Right now, the CFD part is based on OpenFOAM. OpenFOAM is a well-known software library. Uh, it's basically at the same level of accuracy and reliability to the, to the major commercial software. It's, uh, you can find a lot of documentation online demonstrating how good is OpenFOAM. And another important thing is that these, co these codes are under constant quality control. And we keep our repositories aligned with the main ones and so you can be, you can trust the results you are going to obtain with our platform. Just a few examples of how broad is the application of CFD and in general simulations. Here are some of our world-class customers ranging from hydraulic pumps to smoke extraction for parking lots 
and also building simulation in the architecture and building field. So now let's focus uh, very quickly on the main advantages we offer with the cloud simulation platform. Uh, I group them in four categories. The first one is the pricing. First of all, we have a welcome plan available for free. You can uh, sign up for it directly on our website to try the platform. You have no hidden costs. The subscriptions for the pay plans are all you care about. Then there is a flexible pricing uh, depending on, on the custom needs of every customer. We can define different options. And, and now another important thing, since you can leverage on the pay-per-use approach, you do not need to allocate budgets for simulation software or budget that include, usually include software licenses but also hardware resources. And with our solution, when you need the software, you just sign up for the plan you need and start simulating with no investment. So basically simulation becomes a customer charge. About the user experience, you can start right away your simulation with no installation and then you have an automated and intuitive workflow divided for specific application. There is a really smooth learning curve and another very important thing, there is online documentation but mainly dedicated support. Think about that. If you have a problem with a common software, you should pack all your, your model, your problems, take screenshots. With our solution, everything is online and once you grant us permission, we can look at your problem right in the place where it happened. And so it's a very, very quick answer we can provide to you in case of support. And support can come also not only for technical problems, but also in order to, to guide you towards the correct usage of our software. About the hardware, we provide basically on-demand cloud computing. Uh, you can rely on our servers to obtain all the power you need in terms of computation. And also, since you don't have in-house clusters or workstation, you don't have to worry about downtime or breakdowns. And finally, accessibility. With the on-cloud solution, you have a multi-user access and you can collaborate in the same workspace from different remote locations. There is a remote, remote worldwide access and you can use it from any device, even from tablets. So this is just a summary of our advantages and I think we can move on to the live demo now. A quick presentation about the case. So today I wanted to show you how to perform an external aerodynamic simulation in the building environment. Uh, we are going to use a CAD model that is a step file of the Burj Khalifa in Dubai, that is a famous skyscraper. So our simulation we deal with fluid dynamics. It's an external flow. It's in a turbulent regime and we are going to perform a steady simulation. Let's take a look at our domain where we want to obtain our solution. So on the left side you see there is our skyscraper inside a, a, a thing that can can be can appear as a box. Okay, basically it's the so-called bounding box and describe the portion of space around your geometry you want to describe. Apart from the building, here you find six different boundaries, the, the technical term is boundaries, that identify all the sides of our On the Z minus you have the ground and, and the building is placed on the ground. Then you have on Z plus the ceiling that is basically sky. On the y direction you have on y minus the inlet that is the boundary where the air enters and the outlet that is the boundary where the air goes outside. And on the x direction you have the lateral walls. 
So we're going to simulate a fluid that is air and a wind velocity of 10 meters per second on the, in the y plus direction. Uh, the pressure we are going to use is one atmosphere and another important aspect to focus on is which are the physical walls where we are going to prescribe the address condition and those are build, the building and the ground itself. So now I can shift from my presentation to my browser and show you how to start a simulation. Okay, so here we are on concept.com that is the main site from where you can reach every resource we put online. Apart from the description of the product, you can find under services, another important section is the community one. There is a blog where we uh, constantly post uh, interesting articles about technical features of, of our software and also about simulation in general. Then there are webinars and tutorials where we provide videos showing you how to use the platform in different contexts. And finally, in order to create your account, you can just click on the login button on the top right. You will be redirected to an access form where you have to insert your credential if already registered, otherwise you can insert here your email and password to register. I already have my account, so I can just click Login. The second thing you have to do in order to try out the platform, you have to check out the so-called Welcome Plan. To do so, you have to go back into your My Account page, go to the Store, Buy, and select, just a second, select the product Cloud Simulation Plans. Here you will find all the plans you have, but the welcome plan can be purchased, can be signed up here. Okay. So let's go back on our platform and let's take a look at the dashboard starting to, to navigate through our left bar menu. The dashboard presents you with few few information about your account. The most important one is the, the, the credit pie chart. It shows you how many credits you have and how many uh, you have spent so far. Moving to the storage tab, here there are other information about your cases and how and the amount of space of your disk they occupy. Finally, the simulation tab. Here is where you can start your case and open old cases as well as monitoring those that are in progress. Another important thing is the user manual button on the left side in the bottom. Clicking on it, it will open the, our wiki page with the manual. In the manual you can find a very detailed description of the software with everything you need to know to perform a simulation. We will come back to this page later. So let's start and create a case from scratch. In order to do so, you first have to choose the application you want to use. As you can see, we have some of them already in our platform. And for our simulation, we are going to use the general CFD. So then you have to, to, to choose a name. Let's say I will call this one building. And now we are inside our case. On the top part, you can see you have a list of steps. We are in the very first one, the geometry step. And we will proceed towards every single step to complete our simulation. It's a guided procedure and it's a really simple. First thing to do is to upload our geometry. So I already have my uh, skyscraper in the step file. I just click open and the platform loads, loads the file and a graphical window will appear on, on the right showing the, the building 
inside the graphical window. Okay, as you can see, the rotation is uh, by default around 0, 0, 0. If you want to change it, you have to double click on the new center of rotation. Mouse interaction is uh, really straightforward and it's quite common. Now we have to, first thing to do is to define the file units. Every geometry file comes with its own unit. In order to find out the, the unit for this file, we, have, we can take a look at the information and as you can see it shows you the size in x, y and z direction. We can see from the z direction that we have 2700 so it appears to be in feet. I can choose the unit here and click in next. In the second section of the geometry step we have to choose between internal or external flow. In our case it is an external flow. When, once you choose the external, six numbers appear and you have to define them. These are the parameters to define the bounding box. Each of these values, called delta x minus and so on, prescribe the distance between a, a given boundary, let's, let's say x minus, and your CAD model. So, what's the amount of space you want to leave between the X minus boundary and your CAD model. The most intuitive one is the Z minus. Since we want our building on the ground, the space we want to leave between the Z minus boundary and the building is zero. About other boundaries, an, uh, an important thing to notice is that in order to perform a good simulation you have to leave enough space to avoid influences of your boundaries on the flow that will interact with the building. So usually a good rule is to leave the same amount of space occupied by the building times 5 to 10 in the x and y direction. Let's start with the z. Okay, we saw that our building was 2700 in the z direction so we can leave space for let's say 800 feet on the top. At the same time we want our flow will be directed toward the y direction so interaction towards uh, in the x direction will be really small and we can prescribe 800 feet in both x minus and x plus while for the for the y we can see that 1200 feet can be a good measure since you have a size in y that is around 500 so once you are good with these values, the last, last thing to do is to prescribe the boundaries on your model. We saw already in the presentation we want a single boundary grouping every surface of our building. To do so, you can select every, frame, every face of our geometry with a single click under the menu select Selection, select all. At this point you just click create boundary. Just name it building and click create. Okay, now we are ready to start the geometry step. Click in submit. After confirmation you see every step is running will be presented in the case in progress under simulation tab. This step just deals with creation of boundaries. So grouping of surfaces in order to proceed with the meshing and simulation. It will be really, really fast and it will take around two seconds once it starts. Start. And we are going to see in a few seconds that it will be completed. Now we can just open it. Once the case is completed, it appears in the selection of cases menu. 
we can just open it and we will see that on the top bar we are moved from geometry to the mesh 3D steps. Now the first thing to do in every single step from now on is to choose from which step we want to start. We just run the geometry step, we choose it. And so, as you can see, now we have a box containing our skyscraper. In order to reset the center of rotation, I double click here. And we can, for example, hide these boundaries and we'll see that we have our building inside. So, now we can proceed with the surface meshing, that is the mesh 2D. Another important thing to notice is that from now on you are going to use international system unit of measure, so meters for the length. And as you can see from the information, we have a new bounding box that is in meters. Okay. In the menu, you have to choose the boundary and to prescribe two different parameters for each of the single boundaries we have. The first one is the uniformity level. It's a percentage and 70 is the default value. It describes the velocity from uh, the rate, the velocity that um, in which the, the surface mesh changes its characteristic dimension from the smaller triangle to the, to the bigger one. 70 is usually a good choice. Then you have the prescribed max element size of your mesh for each boundary. In our case, our building is 800 meters tall, so uh, an element size of 2 meters can be good enough. You have to do the same thing for every single boundary and for every boundary of our bounding box 20 can be a good choice except for the ground that is a physical wall and so we need a higher resolution and we can choose 3 for example. Once we completed every step you can click just submit and the mesh to this starts. I already have this step run and so I can go back the simulation and open my old case to show you the results of the mesh 2D. So as you can see this is a complete step, a complete simulation, so I have all the steps available. But once we complete mesh 2D we are in mesh 3D. In this case you are going to see why you need to choose which step you are going to start from. Let's say that our previous mesh 2D wasn't good enough so we have to come back to the Mesh2D, select a new set of parameters and rerun the Mesh2D. So now, in the Mesh3D phase, you have two different Mesh2Ds from which to start. And you can choose the one that you prefer. So let's say you, we use the last one, and as you will see right now, the Mesh2D, the surface mesh, will appear. With all the discretization of our surfaces, divided into triangles. As you can see, you have a higher resolution on the ground with respect to those on the other, on the other boundaries and a good resolution also on our building. So now, given this mesh 2D, we can start our volume mesh. As I told you during the presentation, we have two different parameters two different algorithms you can choose. For this case, let's use the exoiter. The first parameter you have to choose is the mesh size that prescribes the maximum dimension of your element inside the domain. For In our case, 20 meters is good. Let's proceed to the second section of the mesh 3D phase. Here again, you have to prescribe two values for every boundary. These values are wall settings, layers number, and first cell dimension. In order to find out how to choose this, these parameters, you can take a look at the manual in the section Mesh 3D, and you can see that the boundary treatment behaves differently if you choose a, an algorithm or the other one. In, in the case of the hexahedral, the boundary layer parameter rules basically the, the dimension of the cell 
near the wall, near the boundary you choose, and the number of layers of the same dimension cells before coarsening. So, in this case, we can prescribe, let's say, six layers on the building with a dimension of two meters, and then on the ground, Z minus, again, six layers and three meters. Other boundaries will have zero layers, that means the refinement on that boundary is deactivated. So, once we complete this setup, we can just click Submit, and again, we will have our job process in, in the select, in the running, case and running, the simulation tab. We can go back to the CFT and see the Mesh 3D result. Again, select the, step, the previous step you want to see, and as you will see now, a different traffic window will open. This is because with this new graphic window, you can uh, interact with a, a higher amount of filters to apply to your simulation. And so, here is our bounding box, and now I'm going to clip it to take a look inside and see which kind of cells we have. So, with the clip filter and orienting it in the X direction, we can show the edges and click apply. Now, you can see we prescribe the refinement of our mesh only on the ground and on the building, while in the ceiling, lateral walls, inlet and outlet, you don't have refinement. And the cell is the 20 meter dimension cell we prescribed in the first section of the mesh 3D. Okay, now we pro uh, are ready to start our simulation and to prescribe every boundary condition we have for our CFD. First thing to do is to choose the model. Okay, we have air that is a gas, so it's, it's a compressible fluid, but for the velocities that are involved in, uh, in this case, we can consider it incompressible. Then the turbulence model. We have three different options of turbulence models, K epsilon, K omega, and spartal maras. I will use it, uh, use the spartal maras, but in case you need a specific model, we can provide it with no problems. So the density, I use the standard value for atmosphere, as well as for the dynamic viscosity. This value can be, copied, uh, can, can, can be used also for a turbulence initialization. And then the fluid initialization with one atmosphere pressure with zero velocity inside the domain. This is the first step, the first section of our CFD step we can go to the next one and complete the boundary condition. So, we were saying that, we were saying that on the building as well as, as on the ground, we want a no-slip condition, so a physical wall. And that's the default for both building and Z minus. Then, X minus and X plus, we have lateral walls. Given our choice to place them quite far from our building, we, we can use the symmetry condition for both X minus and X plus. It means that basically the flow doesn't interact with, the, with these boundaries. And this choice can be made also for the ceiling, Z max. Okay, so we have three symmetries. And then, Y minus is where our flow enters the domain, so it's an inlet. And you have three different po uh, inlet possibilities. Let's use the inlet velocity that basically is perpendicular to the boundary of choice, and we can prescribe 10 meters per second. 
Here is the hydraulic diameter, and it's an, uh, uh, you, it can be used like the dimension, the characteristic dimension of the whole boundary. In our case, since we are around 1,000, we can use 500 meters, and it's used to initialize turbulence. Finally, we have the bounding box Ymax, and this is the outlet. As you can see here, you have just a single boundary of the outlet, and we will prescribe the one atmosphere boundary condition. Okay, we are good with the boundaries. We can proceed to the final step, the final section of this step, that is the simulation settings. Here you have to choose between steady simulation or transient. For our case, we are going to reach a steady solution. Here you prescribe the number of iterations and how frequently you want the solution to be saved. So these values I'm, I'm using are quite common. Once you're good with these values, you can click Submit and the simulation starts. Again, I'm going to skip it to go to the results, but uh, our, in, also in our case, you will see the, the case running in the simulation tab, case in progress section. So let's finally go to the results and again select from where you want to see the result. Let's say you run different number of CFTs, you may have different items in this menu here. First thing you can do is to take a look at the residuals. These are a direct measure of how near you are to the current solution. This smooth trend, quite a smooth trend, uh, decreasing tells us that the simulation seems correct. As you can see, you can download your results to post-process them on your PC, or you can use this graphical window with all this, the filters to see and have an insight of our simulation. Another thing I want to show you is this button on the top right that says steps completed. Here you have a summary of everything you have performed in this case and also re uh, error are reported in this tab, table here. To check out your simulation setup you can just click settings and take a look at all the settings you used for a given step of your simulation. Okay, let's now see what our simulation have produced and let's take a look at how the air behaves when encountering this skyscraper. Okay, first thing to do is to place the solution at the last iteration, so we have a converged solution. Then, what I want to do is to show the, the building inside. In order to do so, I have to highlight this is just a trick I'm going to use to, to, to take a look at the building and I can just apply a threshold on the Y plus and click apply. So you will see Just give it some seconds and you will see, hopefully, just a second please, this is the, okay, applying the threshold. Okay, here we are. So this is our building with the pressure contour on it. As you can see, there is a peak of pressure on the, play, on the, on the side of the building that is exposed to the, to the wind and a low pressure on the back part. Now, let's take a look at some information that are quite interesting for those who design buildings, tall buildings. Let's say, for example, velocities at pedestrian level to uh, discover if there are issues with the pedestrian comfort rule, um, 
uh, regulations. So now, in order to do so, we can use the slice filter applied on our simulation, uh, align it to the Z direction, and place it near the ground. That in our case is this one, and this is colored by pressure. But another possibility is to color it by velocity. Let's say. So, as you can see, there is a zone where the flow accelerates and there is also a recirculation zone behind our building. So, another slice can be placed slightly above this one, again with the same procedure, using the slice filter, I'm sorry, you have to prescribe where to start your slice and so start every time from the, your system file. Here, apply the slice, and let's place it again along the Z direction. At one thirty, okay. And we, here we are slightly above the, the first one. And again, we can use the, the U to color it by velocity. Okay, so. Another interesting thing you can do is to take a look at the trajectories your higher particles uh, follow during uh, when encountering this building. In order to do so, you can use the string tracer filter and place the source of your streamlines near the ground. Let's say now we want the the source in zero and again one two five zero oh, with the three hundred particles in a radius of twenty meters and this should be good to see the trajectories in our domain Okay, you can see here how the particles interact with our building and are deviated from the main from the main uh, track. When you you can also color the streamlines by velocity, for example, so I like peak of uh, velocity encounter during the trajectories. In order to investigate the recirculation zone behind our building. You can just move your center of the source right after it, and in this case is a 50 in the y direction. You just click apply, and you can see here a, a big recirculation zone behind your building. Okay, so these are just few examples. I don't have so much time to show you everything, but let's say with the pressure contour on, on the building, you can also export a, a, a load for your structural calculations and for your verification. And there are a tons of, of, of possibilities you can do with this software and this kind of analysis. Um, so I, I just want to conclude my presentation with a uh, few slides more to show you a uh, few applications of our our software. Today we saw the building case, but this image here and the list I'm going to show you right after can can give you an idea. Basically, everywhere you have a fluid in motion with respect to an object or inside another, you can apply fluid dynamics. And everywhere you have a mechanical component uh, loaded with pressure or, or punctual forces, you can uh, use simulation to identify uh, the stress distribution inside your, your object. So as you can see here, we have uh, HVAC on the top left, uh, used to predict um, carbon monoxide concentration inside parking lots. Uh, here we have two different valves, a butterfly valve and a check valve showing pressure drops, mass flow to, um, and regulation uh, correlation. Here we have 
uh, one slice of a uh, centrifugal pump uh, used to improve efficiency. Here we have a, a front wing of a Formula 1 car. Here we have a left coronary artery used to um, discover the path of your blood in this kind of uh, context. Finally, here we have a classical mechanic component analyzed with uh, our platform. And the, last, the very last slide with uh, some other examples of application. Here you can find a list that is just a few, few examples of where you can use our, our software. From automotive to aerospace, from biomedical to electronics, you can use uh, CFD and stress analysis to optimize your product design and to, to find out in a very, very first phase, in the very first design phase, what, um, what kind of solution could be a really key factors in, and a game changer for your, for your product. Okay, so I'm done and I can give you, Barbara, back your the line and if, if there are some questions, I'm more than happy to address all of them. Oh, thank you, uh, Alessandro. Um, I'll wait a few seconds. Uh, uh, there's no questions so far. There are no questions. So um, if you have any, just type them in in the question box. In the meantime, I will take back uh, the screen, transition to my own slides. And um, just a second, the transition should be flawless. Um, no, I don't see any question, but um, thank you, Alessandro. What a great tool! And uh, um, thank you for attending. You're still, you know. And okay, there's a question right now. When is it this? Uh, this uh, when can you have the iOS version of this software? Is there an iOS version? Uh, no. Uh, basically, everything can be accessed to to a web browser. So if you have, let's say, a tablet from where you want to use it, you can just use your own browser from Safari to Chrome to Firefox and go inside the platform and try to use it. Uh, I must say, we tested it uh, down to the, let's say, iPad dimension, okay, so the, the classical tablet dimension. It's really complex to use it from, from the, a mobile device like a telephone, okay, that, that's not a good thing to do, but the tablet can be used, of, of course. That's great news. I hope you know you all, um, you know, think about it, and um, that's you know why I want to remind everyone to visit our page at novedge.com, where you can find Conself Cloud Simulation Enterprise, and this software is great because you can, you know, you can get it for a month, up to a year or more, um, you know, um, if you need to use it for a project. Just, you know, you can, there's any time. Um, yeah, it's, it's really flexible in this sense. You, you can um, just use it for the time you need it, and then you can just uh, you're suspend done. your, yeah, your, yeah exactly. and then yes. you can use it again for another project, and uh, uh, the, the applications um, of this software are incredible. I didn't know uh, all the fields that it could be used with. That's great. Yeah. And so, you know, come visit Noveg and uh, take a look and see if it will fit your project and your needs. And um, thank you again for attending. I want to remind you all that this webinar was recorded and if you want to rewatch it again or spread the word and uh, pass it along to people, you know, might need the software, uh, they can just go on YouTube or Vimeo and check out the Noveg channel and the webinar will be posted there as early as this afternoon. Uh, next uh, webinar is will be on game changing visualization with Twin Motion. And to rewatch, yeah, you can follow us on um, Noved. You can follow Noved on Facebook or plus Twitter. There's a lot of information on the best deals for all your design software needs. And I'm going again uh, through our. Um, slides to um, you know show you what Consult brand looks like and thanks again for joining us today 
Thanks a lot, Alessandro. Uh, looking Thank forward you. to um, have you present again, maybe another application. Uh, great. Maybe another field. Yeah. Um, have a great day, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.